Hey guys, welcome to another episode. As you'll see, I'm just in my main base here. I'll show you where we came from before I get on to explaining what I've built there. So, here's the outside, just here. The combination lock. I haven't done much to this bit since the last episode, but... Yeah, so, this is the only bit I've done. I haven't finished the stairs yet, but up here, we have an automated wheat farm. So, most of you would have seen this before. It's a pretty basic design. It's well well known and well used. So pretty much... Is there a gap of water there? It looks like it. I think it's just darker. Well, anyway. So there's water underneath all these little... Um, stone brick artwork things I just did here. I just made it like this so I could put torches there because these are half slabs, the rest of them. So you can't place torches there. It was just to give some more light so they grow a bit faster and the seeds don't pop out when you try and plant them. So basically I just did rows of three just because I thought it looked better and of course the hydration because of the water in its right position. Well I can see the grid above the crops. That's a bit weird. I don't know if you can see that once it's on YouTube but I'll show you the redstone behind this. So pretty much, here's one of the levers here, here's my farming chest, I get 56 wheat per press of this lever, so that's alright. So I'll show you how that works in a second. If this doesn't actually grow by the end of the episode, I'm just going to press it anyway. But what this one does is when the sugar cane grows to whatever height I can come by, bam, the pistons will push it all off into the water and it'll run down here, I'll jump down here and collect it all. That's how that works, and I just did the basicest redstone circuit ever. It's a direct link from the powered block, just on top of the pistons pretty much. If you power the block on top, it'll turn them on, and that just goes in a repeater to extend the signal to the rest of the pistons that are a bit higher up. So I'll go ahead and block that off, and I'll show you the redstone behind this. Oh, let me in there. Well... What did I... okay. Here we go. So here's the redstone here. There's the lever on the other side of this block. That'll power the redstone. I overused the repeaters a bit here, but... I'll probably fix that up later. I actually just finished building this. So how it works... Actually, I'm going to chuck some torches back here. I do not want creepers spawning. How it works is... It goes past the block next to the pistons and that powers the pistons and pushes a stone brick block up. And the water, as you can see, it's dripping down through these blocks. I had to, I had to put it like that. Normally people put the block here and the redstone on top, but I had to change it a bit because I've got water on the other side of these three blocks. Now I don't want to show you, but basically it is on the other opposite side of these three blocks. And this pistons are stopping the water from flowing out onto the crops. But when I press the button, it activates the redstone, all the pistons go down. And then the water just flows out over all the crops and washes it all to me. And here I just got a bunch of repeaters, pretty much. In the right spots to have it extended. And you can actually see the water there. That water's actually for the hydration. The other water's behind these blocks. It's actually up a block. Yeah as well. Anyway, I'll plant another torch here. And I'll fill this in, even though I'm never going to come back here, so there's no point. Is that a skeleton? On the other side of the wall. Good, good, good. Alright. So hopefully you guys understand how that works. It's pretty simple. Most of you would have either used this or seen it before. I'm going to go ahead and cover that up. And... I am going to show you upstairs. So I just built a little staircase here. And here's my enchanting table. I don't know if you saw me get the rest of the bookshelves, but with the sugar cane down there, pretty much just got myself some leather and finished that off to make it look nice. Chest room, still work in progress. i got to extend it further back. And I'm probably going to theme the room a bit different than just stone brick. Or I might continue with stone brick, but... I want to do a few different things. I want to make columns and stuff and have like a big throne room type thing. 
But that's that's quite a bit later before I get started on that. My lookout is still amazing. I love it. The view is the best. That moon slash sun is looking pretty glitchy. I can see it moving. Alright. So I'll show you what I've got planned down here. Here I actually am going to make another room. Now I haven't finished mining it out but what I'm going to be putting here... Oh is that the edge right there? Shit. Alright. I gotta think now. As you can see the stone brick sticking out a bit there. I had to do that for the farm. I'm gonna I'm gonna cover this whole hill at one stage, make it look natural, but I'm kinda failing at that at the moment. So that'll be the edge there. And I guess all I can do is go up. I'll probably have I don't know if this floor is high enough, or if it's too high, that's about one, two, three, four high, five high even. So that's not being space efficient as much as I'd like. So I'm probably going to have a little chest room here. Now that I think about it, I'm going to move the chest room down there because there's not much room to do much else there. And I'm going to dig this out this direction, and this is where I'll get my extra space. So I'm going to set up a melon and pumpkin farm, automated as well. And I'm also going to get some potatoes and carrots. Haven't found any yet, but... I think I found a zombie spawner earlier on. I'm not sure though, but... I will find a zombie spawner at some stage, and that's where I'll get my carrots from. So hopefully that all works out. Now this is a bit boring me digging this, so I'm not going to go on for too long. I'm going to wrap this episode up. But I am going to tell you what other redstone projects I'm working on. I've got the designs all done and ready. But, of course I can't build them yet because of my resources. I'm very low on redstone. And I need a lot more for these projects. And what they are is an elevator. I'm going to build an elevator somewhere in here to go between the floors and that's all going to be automated so I've always wanted to build one pretty much because since I've been on multiplayer servers for most of my Minecraft career type thing you can't really get them to work it's like multiplayer just doesn't work but single player seems to work fine on my um, creative server where I test all this stuff it worked first shot and it was pretty easy to set up as well. So, sorry if you can hear that in the background. I think that's a telemarketer or something at the door. But anyway, <laughs> hope hope you can't hear that. I really hope you can't hear that. I'm just going to continue on here. What other redstone circuits am I planning? Elevator, a sand generator, definitely a sand generator because I want to incorporate a lot of sandstone into my future builds and I was going to make like an automatic food dispenser type thing maybe some traps just oh, I don't see much point in putting traps but I might put a few little ones just for the sake of it maybe if someone gets a wrong combination I can make the floor fall down that will be pretty cool if I can get that worked out but it looks like I've got a big dig ahead of me guys so I'm going to end this episode here, and I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you like what I'm doing with this base. It's kind of a, it's a bit different to what I've been seeing. It's kind of plain, but I will do it up at a later stage. So if you do like what I'm doing, make sure you chuck it a like. And of course, if you want to stay tuned for future episodes, just make sure you subscribe. So, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you later.